Hey, welcome back to Reignited. Now, I'm sure you saw the thumbnail there. In this video, we're going to be covering the valve adjustment procedure on a Cummins engine. Stay with me. So a valve adjustment procedure is one of those things that's kind of gone the way of the dodo bird. You don't really see it too much anymore. And for good reason, there's a lot of alternatives. However, with these Cummins engines, it is still something that we need to do every 100,000 miles or so. You want to go ahead and check that valve clearance on there. I did a rebuild on this engine here, which you can also watch on my channel. So I'm going to check the valves just to be sure. I took everything off, put it right back where it came from, but I'm still going to go through the procedure to figure out just exactly what my valve clearances are, make any adjustments or if any are needed. One important point about doing this procedure is that you want to make sure that the engine is cold or as near to it as it can be when you're doing this procedure. Obviously when heat is involved, things can swell and tolerances and clearances can change. So we want to be setting this when it's cold. Now granted for me, this procedure is going to be much, much simpler than the average because I have the cab off of this truck right now. So I have really great access to all of the cylinders, makes it nice and easy and also makes sense to do it right now. If you're doing this with the engine still installed in the vehicle, it's not too bad, but once you get back to cylinder number five and cylinder number six, it definitely gets a little bit tight back there, but just have a little bit of patience. You'll be able to pull it off. The first thing you want to do on this procedure is you want to take a look at your crankshaft damper here and somewhere on this damper, there's going to be a line marked into it on the face of it. Now, if you look at the top here, it says TDC or top dead center. That's the mark you're looking for. So go ahead and mark that with either a paint pen or whiteout or something of that nature. Now, once you have that mark situated, you want to bring this mark to exactly 12 o'clock position. Now, once you've brought that mark to the 12 o'clock position, you want to feel your number one cylinder rocker arms and see if they have any movement in them. You should have some movement here. If you do not have any movement, you're on the wrong stroke. So you'll need to go ahead and spin the engine a full or spin the crankshaft a full 360 degrees so it comes back up to here. So right now I have zero play in cylinder number one. So I'm gonna go ahead and spin this engine over one full revolution and then I should have some play here in this front cylinder. All right, spun the engine over one full revolution and now you can hear I have some play but not a whole lot. So definitely a good plan to be adjusting these valves right now. They are way too tight on this one. So with the engine in this position, we can check the intake valve lash on cylinders one, two, and four. And we can check the exhaust valve lash on cylinders one, three, and five. Now the specification on the intake valve lash should be somewhere between six thousandths and fifteen thousandths. So ideally it would generally be about ten thousandths on the intake side. Now for the exhaust side, it should be between 21 thousandths and 34 thousandths. So ideally we want to be right around 26 thousandths for our exhaust valve lash. All right, I'm going to check my intake valve lash first on here, set that. So the lock nut here is a 14 millimeter. So go ahead and break that loose. And then the Allen to adjust it is a five mil Allen. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking my 10 thousandths uh, feeler gauge here. I'm just slipping it in. Looks like this one's pretty close. And then I'm kind of bringing it down, not crushing it, just getting it to where it's just touching it. Then I'm tightening down the lock nut from there. Now we're going to move on to the exhaust, which is one, three, and five. So again, you just go ahead and break loose the lock nut the 14 mil wrench here. Then slip in your feeler gauge, which again, we're going with a 26 thou feeler gauge. This one's close, but it's a little tight. One thing that might help is to give your feeler gauge a little bit of a bend, kind of like I've done with these guys here. That way it actually will slip in there a little easier. If it's totally flat, sometimes it'll get caught up on the edge here and it makes it hard to slip in. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a little bit of a bend so I can slip it in there smoothly. All right, there we go. Got a little bend in there now. Ah, that's better. So what you want when these things are set is you want a little bit of drag on the feeler gauge, but it still needs to be able to move smoothly in there. You need to be able to slip it back in there if necessary. 
All right, now that that cycle is done, go ahead and rotate the engine another 360 degrees to where your timing mark is back to top dead center again. But this time around, we're going to be doing the intake valves on cylinders three, five, and six. And we'll be doing the exhaust valves on two, four, and six. So in exhaust valves, we should have two, four, and six loose, and they are barely got some movement to them, so they're all tight. We need to loosen those up for sure. So that's the whole procedure right there. We've ran through the intake and the exhaust valves on every single cylinder. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and spin the engine through a couple more revolutions and then set it back up to top dead center again and recheck all of my clearances to see if anything has moved. Because this is a fresh rebuild, I want everything to be as good as possible. So go ahead, run it through a couple more revolutions, double check your clearances before you throw the valve cover back on. There we go, ran the engine through a couple of revolutions and rechecked all of my valve lash clearances, all the cylinders within spec. The intake valves are now at 10 thousandths and the exhaust valve are at 26 thousandths. Now, to go back through one final step, if you wanna go this far, you can go ahead and torque down those uh, lock adjuster nuts to 18 foot pounds. So there it is, that's the entire procedure. Really not that complicated, very straightforward. Of course, it is a much more difficult proposition with the engine actually in the vehicle because there, things are much, much tighter in the firewall, especially once you get to cylinders number five and number six right here, the firewall tends to start to get in the way. But again, if you have a little bit of perseverance, it's not too tricky. And being as how this is something you're only going to be doing every once every 100,000 miles, not too big of a pain, definitely something your average mechanic can handle and it's definitely something you can handle in a couple hours on your own. That's gonna be it for this video, guys. Very short, very sweet, very simple. I hope you learned something. I hope you're able to take something away from that. If you wanna follow me on Instagram, it's reignited.tx and if you wanna pick up a t-shirt to support the channel, it's reignitedtx.com. All right, you guys, thank you so much always for all of your support and we'll see you next time on Reignited.